Hey guys, welcome to Buick Update 48. So over the winter, I've spent a lot of time trying to get my inner fenders back into uh, good looking condition. They, like many Skylarks and GSs, have a lot of uh, rust and rust holes and pitting all throughout the front of the inner fenders where water or battery acid seems to accumulate. This is the passenger side and the battery tray goes right there. And this was essentially completely gone. Um, there were just holes everywhere, um, especially in these larger uh, flat areas. And I, I might have had this one uh, bolt hole right there, but everything else was completely trashed. So the trick here is that they don't make patch panels for uh, 68 and 9 Skylarks. They only make for 70 to 72. And because of that, you know, I... Um, I didn't really want to be SOL, so I just kind of wanted to see what I could put together. And I'd recently gotten a 3D printer and spent some time learning CAD. And because of that, um, I was able to actually model, build, and press my own patch panels uh, so that I could basically take a 3D scan of the original design and then model it and then be able to uh, print test pieces, make sure it fits exactly right, then build a male and female press mold and then throw it in my uh, cheap hundred dollar 12 ton press and then stamp out uh, these patch panels which i'd like to think on this mostly finished one actually ended up quite nice so um, i cut from the side all the way around and then tigged it in and then cleaned it up but uh, so again i'd like to to think it turned out pretty nice and i'm currently working on the driver's side and I got that almost completely trimmed, so we'll see how this one goes. But I wanted to walk through the process of how the uh, how I came to be able to make the patch panels and kind of what the process was. So I took scans of the inner fenders before anything was cut with my iPhone uh, with an app I believe is called, um, and it uses the iPhone's. Uh, face ID scanner and it'll build you a 3D model and then I imported that into FreeCAD and then started designing these mail molds. So these mail molds are essentially what I would take and then put up to the uh, the actual uh, inner fender when this was attached so that I could see if I could get the appropriate shape for these lines and as you can see i think this was probably the one that i ended up going with but the important part was to get the uh, these joining pieces together where i would have to weld it into the the actual um, inner fender itself i on the second time through i decided to not try and cut it off um, specifically where all the bad parts were because you can see it's only really bad up until about here but on the first try through um, on the passenger fender, I actually joined it in the middle of this uh, ridge. And um, because it wasn't exactly perfect, um, I ended up having to, to fill a tiny bit right here uh, just because the metal got too thin. Um, but the, the spacing between everything else was very nice. And then um, everything ended up very straight. The blending was very nice. So I think with a little bit more primer, um, it'll come out much nicer but the second time through I decided to go all the way to the end and only worry about these three connection points and that made my life much easier because um, I don't have to worry about the exact width and spacing of this I only had to worry about the spacing of these three ribs which I already knew um, so I was able to take my original work and then just flip it so I spent a lot of time looking at different materials um, and trying to do some test stamps and see if I could um, see what the, the actual toughness of each of the materials were in order to determine um, which material would make for the best stamping process. And this is uh, this is PLA, and this actually ended up being one of the best. And you can see it has some relatively sharp corners. Uh, this is PLA carbon fiber um, with a higher wall count so that it was a little stronger. And this was essentially the same as PLA. It just um, had a little bit more uh, rigidity and was able to get a nicer crease on the outside. This is PET G. It deformed quite a bit, crushed quite a bit, not nearly as good. This was PLA carbon fiber with fewer wall count. 
very similar to PLA. Um, this one did not do as well again because of the lower wall count. This was PLA carbon fiber um, where I used a progressive stamping method so that the female end that I was stamping on um, started very wide for the first press and then I had a second one that was smaller to get the final shape. Um, this was also using a high wall count and uh, this was also very nice. And then lastly, this is polycarbonate, which is supposed to be one of the uh, stronger materials, but it it's very strong, but it's so brittle that the mold actually um, cracked. Uh, and even then it doesn't seem to have a ton of compressive strength. And you can see this is a very rounded, not good press at all. So I ended up going with just regular PLA for basically everything with a very high wall count. And um, that led me to be able to create what are uh, essentially reusable molds. I've been able to get several good presses out of um, these uh, with the use of PLA. So essentially what one of the molds looks like, this is my full driver side uh, mold. And uh, I just created one big dovetail because I can only print um, up to 380 millimeters tall in my printer. But uh, these pop apart. This is obviously the male side. So after test fitting each of these male pieces, and as you can see, it took quite a few tries. After test fitting each of these male pieces um, into the actual, uh, the actual inner fender, I ended up with a full-size piece with a backing so that I can stamp the top parts flat um, when the female side comes in. And then I basically printed an inverse of this, but with a different spacing so that there's a, you can see that the, uh, the rib has an offset of about, um, of an extra few millimeters so that the metal, when it gets sunk in, it has the space to create that, uh, that nice, um, near right angle. So, uh, this also finding that proper spacing also, also took, uh, quite a bit of time. And I actually, as you can tell, I had multiple tries of, of all of these. So this is like try one for the passenger side and then, um, try two, uh, which as you can see, I stamped it a little close. So then I, I couldn't get a, a good flat surface on this side in order to weld it in. And then this was try two, but with a different size female. And as you can see, this is a very tight side. So, but the thing was, is when I actually tried to hold this up to the uh, inner fender itself, um, these were actually too sharp um, of a fold down. So then I kind of had to go back to the drawing board slightly. So I essentially printed the same male mold, but then created different spacings for the female mold and then pressed it down and saw which one fit the best. And after that, I determined that about five millimeters was what the, uh, the actual um, piece itself was using. And I was able to essentially hold this up to the cuts from the inner fender that I'm trying to patch and then find that this profile seemed to fit the best. Um, and it turns out I had the vertical height pretty spot on. So after reprinting the female mold, uh, then I was able to move on and actually make the, the fourth piece, um, which actually ended up getting welded in. And then again, because these are essentially exact mirrors, um, this made the driver's side much, much more simple, um, or simpler rather. And all I really had to do was, um, invert it in the CAD software and then, uh, you know, essentially try again and stamp it out, print or print another mold, stamp it out, and then start trimming. And this was actually one of the other reasons why. Um, so this was just the, the 3D scan software will get me to probably within a millimeter or two of where everything should be. It's not, it's not a thousand percent precise. It's not some $10,000 3D scanner. It's literally my iPhone. So this being just a hair short um, made this, when I tried to join it in, just a hair short, making this um, pop out uh, a little too far. So I ended up with something that kind of looked like this. 
uh, when I actually welded it in, and that's why the this piece got so thin when I tried to grind it down. And that, again, wasn't a big deal, but um, I this piece just got paper thin, so I was able to just fill it from the backside and, um, and sand it down. So I fixed that on the uh, the passenger side model, um, after figuring that out and trying to get this done on the driver's side. And then I was able to stamp that out. And then from there, I was able to actually take all of this, cut it out, and then um, end up with this piece, which is very close to being completely trimmed and ready to go. So everything matches up very well. That has to be um, pushed up just a hair uh, because, um, but the vertical profile is almost perfectly there. And then similarly right there, that matches incredibly well. So after all of that, um, and I, getting the first one weld done, the other trick was getting the bolt holes exactly where they needed to be. This side was actually quite easy because I had this piece as reference. So I was able to take the, uh, the other side that I hadn't cut into yet and make a template. Um, but the other nice part is that the battery tray also has um, an exact template. So this is what I welded. This is an actual reproduction battery tray. And then being able to lay that in and see that all of the bolt holes uh, line up perfectly was a really good indication that, that everything fit very well and uh, gave me an extra reassurance that the bolt holes were in the right place. So then um, I was able to drill out the, the bolt hole template and take this and throw it in the car and everything fit just fine. Uh, the only difference was because of a slight adjustment I had to make, um, this was actually probably a 16th inch too short, which pushes this, it doesn't have the, the freedom to move about like a quarter inch that way, which meant I just had to, to shave down just a hair of this battery hold down in order for it to not run into the actual um, inner fender, which is not a huge deal, but uh, it's on the underside of, of this um, hold down so you would never see it but regardless it's just something to note so I'm quite happy with how all this process turned out and this is really really cool because that means I can make as many patch panels as I want um, the really cool part is there's a company called send cut send where I can send 2d models that I can generate from my 3d modeling that I print out and I can send them the uh, basically the plane that I build this female piece off of and they'll cut it out of steel. Um, so they'll cut it out of 18 gauge steel and they're like, I think each one of these plates is like 20 bucks a pop, um, but they fit exactly onto uh, the molds so that I don't have to waste um, any metal when I'm doing this. And uh, I can just stamp them out and then I have the full piece, which is pretty awesome. So took some trial and error, but after probably $50 of plastic and $100 worth of test sheets to get my legs under me. I can crank these out all day long. Um, I can make some for my dad's car. I can make them for my car if I do a bad job trimming it or something like that. But as you can see, this is one of the remnants that I used um, to practice some of the, the welding on. And you can see it's essentially turned paper thin and uh, turned into Swiss cheese. So. Um, that's what the entire passenger side uh, looked like under the battery tray. And I'll get this trim, final trimmed and welded up here soon. Then I can paint them, throw them back in the car, and uh, get the rest of this assembled. But I was able to get the doors on uh, with my wife and my dad's help. Got some bumpers on, and it's starting to look like a real car again. So. I also got some new door hinges, which were surprisingly difficult to find. Uh, but regardless, it's all coming back together. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.